What is up everybody, Robbie C here. Excited to be back with another video that is honestly one of my favorites on the channel and I end up referring to a lot when I'm working with students or coaching them and they're having trouble hitting their lines or one of the best places that we come into this is tournament prep practice rounds. When people have a particular hole that they're struggling with and they can't seem to nail the line, they can't seem to nail the shot and they're like, okay, I guess I'm just not gonna do well at this one. So catch me if I fall. It's a concept that I wish I could say is like original to me, but I can almost guarantee that someone much smarter than me came up with it, and that is T-box geometry. T-box geometry is the idea of adjusting how you use the T-box, the angles that you create on the T-box to help you find more efficient and more accurate lines. Of course, what do we mean by this? The best way that we're gonna demonstrate this is by finding our way over on a T-box. Now, usually the pattern that lots of players who are right-handed are going to make is they're gonna start on the back right of the T-box and you're on the front side of the T-box, just so you know. They start on the back right of the tee box and they're gonna work their way to the front. Whether they're throwing a hyzer, whether they're throwing an anhyzer, or whether they're throwing a straight shot. Our body gets into this trap of, and I watch it happen with so many people, they get back here and they wear it out on this corner of the tee box, then progressing their way to the front. But what I wanna tell you is that I feel like there are, I'm gonna use right-handed players as our example here, there are three distinct lines that can instantly help you hit your shot a little easier. And once you master these three lines, you really open up the realm of possibility to kind of manipulating these to get those unique shots on those unique holes. Our first option is the most common when you're wanting to throw a straight shot. What are you trying to do? You're trying to move from the back middle of the tee box to the front center of the tee box. Now, if you're looking through an Anheuser, I think one of the easiest ways is to use that standard path of back right to front left, which if that's Anheuser's, then Heiser's is going to be the exact opposite, starting in the back left and moving to the front right. Now, for being a proper YouTuber, probably a bad idea to just unload all that information on the front end, because realistically, if you saw that and you wanna try it out, feel free to cut the video right there and keep moving. But I do wanna explain kind of the rationale behind that and the nuances that come with it. So let's start with the flat shot. One of the key reasons we created these run-up lanes is that we want to position our body in a way that our hand is as free to come through. And we talked about in a video recently on the channel of speed of the hand. We want to be able to send that hand as fast as possible. So if we can get our body out of the way, we can allow that hand to have a little more freedom. So on the straight shot, for instance, we have a basket just about 200 feet away from us, dead straight. Now, could I attack this with a hyzer angle? I sure can, because there's room over to the right. Could I come in with a forehand? I could, it's a little dicier, but it's possible. But a straight shot is gonna work just fine here. So a straight shot's what we're gonna try to do. And we wanna focus on using T-box geometry to not only worry about our run-up, but thinking through the follow-through of our arm. Because when we're trying to hit angles, we're trying to hit those lines, what we are focused on doing with our arm can have a drastic impact in our ability to hit or execute that shot. For instance, if I wanna throw anhyzers, I wanna think about drawing a slash down with my arm. If I wanna throw a hyzer, it's obviously the exact opposite. And if I can think about trying to come across as flat as possible, that's gonna allow me to throw some flat straight shots. Now I've talked about it before, but our natural angles and natural tendencies, when I'm trying to throw a flat shot, it still comes out with at least a little bit, probably that much hyzer, even when in my mind, I feel like I'm throwing a flat shot. So because we want our body to get out of the way, what we're going to do is we're we're gonna start in the middle here. We're gonna work our way up towards the front of the box and we're gonna to try to stay in the middle and just pull our hand across in a flat realm. I'm not gonna to try to put any power into this. I am just feeling out and letting my body feel what it's like for things not to be in the way. Now, that's an archive, so overstable mid-range. So I had to, I really had to put some juice on it to get it to hold straight the entire time. I didn't do that because I was just trying to throw flat and smooth. And so because of that, it faded out a little bit. Here we go. That one, we put a little more pizzazz on and it's a Luna. So it's not necessarily an overstable putter and therefore it went straight and had a little bit of movement to the right because it's the Luna. In almost every drill where we're changing something about our form, running into a new thing full power, I feel like it's not gonna actually implement that skill into your game. In fact, it will probably take you backwards multiple steps instead of just letting the principles hit. The hand drill, the backwards drill that we had in the hand speed video, 
is not designed so that you're standing on every tee box now and you're just throwing completely backwards. It's designed to let you feel what it's like for that hand to go through and fire so that later on when you implement the full throw, you can get back to feeling that hand go through. And this drill, we wanna be walking straight so that our body gets used to, okay, this is what it's like to walk straight at the target and break the habit that lots of people have of every single throw is just here and I'm trying to come out and around, I'm trying to come through. So many variances there. Well, now let's talk about hyzers. In hyzers, we wanna be able to get the body out of the way so that the hand can come through as strong as possible. One thing about this is that most people who have ever achieved their maximum distance shot, it's been some form of a grip lock to the right because our shoulders end up over rotating to the point of that max hit point, that max pull through where the tension comes through, the arm sort of stopping, the quote towel whipping, and the disc rips out of the hand. If our shoulders have turned too much, that rip or release point is off to the right, which is why we get the powerful grip lock. So when we're trying to throw hyzers, once again, we're getting the body out of the way and we wanna make sure that we are moving in a straight line, we would struggle even if we started left side because now in order to get the disc to the right, I have to hold on to the disc a little longer to keep the shoulders in like engaged and over rotate to a degree so that I can get that pull to the right. So what we're gonna do is simply get the body out of the way, get things in position. I'm still forward facing, but from this point when I move left to right, I can come through and boom, if I just throw my shoulders according to the line are already opened up, which means also if I early release it, it's still gonna be moving in that direction, which allows me to generate the hyzer. Before we dive into our last angle of the video, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Foundation Subscription Boxes. The Foundation Subscription Box is a monthly subscription box that you can, for $45, get three fantastic discs, including one always guaranteed custom stamp disc, as well as a swag item. The theme of this month's box is the world's box, the event that brings us all here together in Lynchburg, Virginia today. But I wanted to give you a preview of this month's box so you can check it out because it has some really cool things. As we are in, heading into the 2024 World Championship, we have a Kristen Tatar Opto Ice Explorer. So beautiful, great flyer, Explorer, super overlooked disc. We have the archive from Prodigy for Isaac Robinson, who won MPO last year. Really awesome disc, overstable, mid-range. This could serve so many solid slots. And then last but not least, as someone who recently put the Luna in his bag as a thrower, this one I was really excited for, a Crystal Z Luna with the custom stamp foundation world stamp on it. As for swag items, you get an info card that kind of explains world championships are here, as well as three really cool items that I'm excited for. One, uh, you have a sticker with that world stamp. Second, you have a keychain with that world stamp. And then last but not least, something I don't know if they've done before, you have a kitchen fridge magnet with the world stamp. So you can rep foundation and worlds in so many venues. If you want this world's box, and let me tell you, the Lunas themselves are worth the price of admission for this. Head over to foundationdisc.com. You can grab your sub box. As long as you purchase a sub box by the end of the month of August, you will guaranteed get this month's thing. Now, last but certainly not least is going to be the Anheuser. And I saved the Anheuser for last because realistically, I think there's two different ways of approaching this. And my coach is one of the people who would argue that for Anheusers, when you really, you don't need the big turnover, it's okay to add the straight line variant and then let the hand come over top and pull it a little more. But if you're struggling with Anheusers, you often find yourself failing at Anheusers. I think this is a really easy exercise to when we talk about moving that back left or back right to front left, now my body's in the way. So I have to commit and send the hand up and over. And so it almost puts my arm in sort of a mold that it has to follow. Because if I were to just throw this straight from here and just send the hand forward, it's gonna go out way to the right. So by causing myself to almost somewhat be in the way, it allows me to be in position to come up and through the shot. And once again, on a lower power vibe, you wanna make sure that you're committing. I'm okay if when you're doing this exercise, you're actually creating rollers. This is very similar to when I'm teaching people forehands and I talk about taking flippy stuff and throwing it on spike hyzers. You slowly adjust the angle to get it so where it's not spiking, it's kind of getting more flat. The same thing here of if you're struggling with this, learn how to get some rollers down for a second and then know, okay, this is roller angle. This is maybe more of an actual shot. 
Now right there, you can see, I didn't commit. I didn't send the hand. I actually just threw it really straight. I didn't get over on top of it. And so because of that, I'm, I'm not letting the mold sort of, and not the mold of the disc, the mold that I'm creating with my geometry shape sort of fix that. Now, an easy way to adjust that is if you felt like you went too right, then just adjust your line and go instead of, it doesn't have to be extremes all the time. If I want an easier line, I can start back right and move to front middle, which is going to make me feel like, hey, I have a little bit more of a straight shot opportunity. Now, another cool thing about that Anheuser line is that also opens it up for hyzers with a forehand. If you're trying to throw that wide hyzer forehand, then you can also use that back right to front left for a right-handed player. One great example of this is actually the foundation crew came out here and collabed with Cole Radolin, and hole five on this course has three very distinct fairways. There's a straight up the gut, there's a line to the right and a line to the left. And the guys actually took all three lines and if they use their T-box geometry, it can seem overwhelming to hit all three of those lines on your own, but with a little help of T-box geometry, it's crazy how much easier and convenient it gets to hit the lines you're actually going for, which is only just gonna make disc golf more fun instead of that frustrating moment of like, oh, didn't execute the shot again. As I mentioned in the intro, I love T-box geometry. It is a concept that I end up utilizing with students all of the time when I'm actually out on the course with them. And utilizing the T-box is one of the things that so few people actually consider when they are approaching how to attack a hole. And I'll be honest, I run a podcast where we talk about disc selection a lot. And if you have the right disc, it can still be thwarted for your efforts to succeed on the hole simply because you aren't using the T-Box to your advantage. So let's use all the tools that we have available to us while we're out there trying to score. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, feel free to let me know sort of what resonated with you. If you have any questions down in the comments below, and I'll do my best to respond. As always, I wanna say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Please make it fantastic for someone else too. But for now, we're gonna leave you with the birdie.